have you ever thought about becoming so valuable within your team or within your career or within your company that everyone respects and looks up to you? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you the exact step-by-step -step guide on how to get there. The majority of people fail, sadly, to master these concepts. However, if you stick with me until the end, I promise that these changes will change and improve your career more than you could have ever imagined. My name is Robert Invesh, owner of eight companies generating seven figures yearly, and I can tell you that I've spent my last 14 years of hard lessons and millions lost to learn these principles and come to these conclusions, all of which I will share with you today. Number one, and this is the foundation of a well-built career. I'm sure you've had thousands of interactions with professionals of all types, whether that's electricians or plumbers, teachers or school staff members, waiters or cooks. In all of these cases, I'm sure you remember moments where someone really seemed like they shouldn't be there, like a teacher that you asked yourself, why do they even teach? Why are they even here? And in other cases, I'm sure you remember, for example, some teachers that have less, left such a positive impact on your life that you remember them with dear to this day. Well, let me ask you, if you would need to hire a teacher within your team today, who would you choose? The answer is obvious. At the same time, let me ask you why. Why would you choose one professional over the other? I will tell you now, it is their attention to their craft. It is the quality of their work. And that's the first step towards building a career that you can be proud of. In a business context, I can tell you that we work with engineers all the time. We've built business after business over and over again, both for ourselves and for our clients. And I can tell you the main differentiator between engineers is the quality of their work after they push any part of their work to the main hub, to the main branch. Why is that important? Because after an engineer pushes their work, then it goes into quality assurance. If their work is high quality, it will just pass into production. If not, the quality engineer will mark it as did not pass QA. And we have literally had engineers on our roster and we're not proud of them where they would constantly go back and forth between ready for QA, did not pass QA, ready for QA, did not pass QA. Don't be that person. So what can we do to not be that person, but instead deliver higher and higher levels of quality in our work every single time? The answer is actually very simple, and it is to review our own work. If you are a developer, check your own work, check your own code before you push it to live. If you are an article writer, check your own article before you send it to the editor. You raise your own level of standard of quality so high that no one can compete with you. This will make it so that everyone wants you on their team. Moving forward from there, there's also an ever-growing issue nowadays. More and more people are becoming more and more comfortable. And in their comfort, many of them are becoming slower and slower in delivering the results that they're expected. For example, in one of our companies, we write articles for our clients. And these articles vary in size. But let's say we look at only long form articles. Well, at one point, we had an interview with someone and we asked them honestly, how much would it take you to write a 3000 word article and their answer shocked us they said oh i would need around three days and we're like three days why would you need three days to write one article and they said well in day one i would do research on the subject in day two i would write the article itself and then i would sleep on it and in day three i would edit it to make sure it's good and they said well maybe i don't need a full day for editing but I definitely need two and a half days so I could write two of those articles per week. We were honestly shocked by their answer because we've been in the industry of writing content for our clients for many years 
And we explained that our writers get articles done in three to four hours on almost any subject we give them. And so now, all things being equal, just like before, let's assume that the quality of the articles is the same, the amount you pay per article is the same, how you communicate with them is the same, and so on. Which one of these two people would you hire? Would you hire the person that can only give you two articles a week? Or would you hire the person that can give you 10 articles a week? Again, considering the quality of those articles is the same. Again, the answer is more than obvious. In other words, point two of our strategy is to improve the speed of the delivery of anything that we do. If you write articles, how quickly can you produce an article? If you write code, how quickly can you write that code? And so let's talk a little bit about how can we increase the speed of delivery? Well, two things you can do here. Number one is I highly recommend everyone do is to track your time. In most cases, you would have no idea how much it actually takes you to do things. However, the moment you start tracking your time, you'll be able to number one, be aware of how much the different parts of your process take. And now number two, that allows you to then look back and say, okay, which one of these could I do a little bit faster next time? And then number two, the second thing you can do to be faster is to eliminate distractions. When you're working, put your phone on silent or put it in another room, put music that you like to listen to, anything you can do, eliminate all distractions. Close your inbox, close your social channels, close everything, just do the work you actually need to do and you'll be shocked at how much faster you can deliver on work without any distractions whatsoever. Moving on to point number three, I would like to ask you, have you ever been in a situation where you really wanted to produce quality work and you really wanted to deliver on time, but for some reason, some things happen and you weren't able to? The reason doesn't matter. The feeling matters of I really, really did try and I still wasn't able to. Or let me ask the opposite. Have you ever been in the other part of the equation where you are in a team and you're dependent on someone on the team to deliver something by a specific date and they haven't delivered that? What's worse, imagine if that same person didn't say anything about it. They just missed their deadline. It was one, two days past the deadline and no one said anything about it. They didn't say anything you completely forgot, it was just missed. I can tell you from personal experience, in many cases, it has happened to me where we would del delegate an outcome. And by the way, we don't work in tasks within our teams and our companies, we work on outcomes. And we don't have time to go into the difference here, but it's very, very important to make sure you hit all of your goals for this year as a team. If you wanna know more, we've written a book called Unshackled, The Seven Levels of Business Excellence, and we go very deep into how to increase team productivity and team effectiveness. Coming back, we've delegated those outcomes. We've been very clear on the deadline. We've been very clear on them actually understanding what they need to do, yet they missed their deadline. They didn't say anything before they missed their deadline. They didn't say anything after. And then I had to follow up with them to ask, hey, have you done this? And guess what their answer was? Their answer was, I'm working on it. Now, I don't know about you, but that tells me almost nothing about it. Working on it, what? Are you 50% are you done, 90% done? Why is it late? Why didn't you say anything? How much more time do you need? And so on and so forth. In other words, this person failed to communicate. And I can think of dozens of examples of people that failed to communicate in these type of situations. And I highly recommend you not be that person. So yeah, number one, you have high quality work. Number two, you have speed of delivery. However, number three, you always communicate well with everyone in your team. And if you're wondering how you can improve your level of communication, the only thing you need to do is to always ask questions. Ask your team leader or your coworker, how often would you like me to communicate my progress? What would you like the report to contain? What would you like me to do in this case or in that case? Or let's say something already happened and they gave you feedback. 
then you can say, oh, well, this is criticism, but what can you do? How, what can you control? What, what you can control is ask them, okay, the next time this happens, what would you like that I do differently? And then they will tell you because they want to work better with you just like you want to work better with them. So the only thing you need to do is to constantly ask questions. Speaking of communication, the most important achievements that people like you and I can get in life in general is from working within a team. If you want to take everything you've learned here today and put that within the framework of achieving things together with a team, I highly recommend seeing our next video, which literally helps you work well within any team to achieve all of the overarching goals of the team as a unit.